Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a mini review of my Big Tree Tech Manta M8P mainboard. I just want to say thanks to Big Tree Tech for supplying this Manta board to me. I ended up purchasing um, some Big Tree Tech TMC2209 stepper drivers and also the CB1 module with the heatsink. I am also running this board with closed loop steppers and it works great. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about this board, um, kind of do my own little mini review now that I've been using it quite a bit on the simple core here. So this has become one of my favorite kind of form factors for boards um, for kind of high end, medium to high end printers that need more than five stepper motors. So on this simple core or this tried and build, I am running three Z independent Z motors. So I do need the extra steppers. And generally when you get into the boards of this size, you are going to start to get into um, this form factor. This is a pretty straightforward form factor as far as its length and width. The MKS Monster 8 is the same. Um, the Big Tree Tech Octopus is the same. Uh, the Fisex Spider, um, they're all similar form factor, but what really sets the Manta series of boards apart is the actual um, CB1 module that they have, or potentially you could use a Raspberry Pi CM4 here as well. So I, I really like that this actually sockets right onto the board nice here out of the way. There's no extra USB cables or anything like that. I find it the most convenient. Um, as you can see with my really crappy wiring here, I hate wires and um, this just kind of keeps my the back of my printer as clean as it possibly could be. So I really like that. Um, these are really nice boards for Clipper, of course, because of the CB1 module. Um, something people may not know is, you know, a lot of people might be concerned about Big Tree Tech supporting this CB1 board in the future. And the thing I like about this is um, they actually use the Manta board in a printer, the BQ Huracan. That uses the M4P Manta board with a CB1 module. So Big Tree Tech and BQ are invested in keeping the Linux operating system up to date and working well because they have already integrated into their ecosystem of printers, which shows to me that they did, didn't did just throw this board on the market. Oh, here's a Raspberry Pi replacement main board. We'll just slap it together and um, kind of abandon it in a couple of years. I, I really think they're going to support this board and the CB1 module very well in the future, being they have integrated it into their ecosystem. I really like that um, they do use fuses here for most of the important components. Um, the board is very clearly laid out. It's got a good amount of fan connectors here. I believe there's four here and there's three here, which are selectable via a jumper. So you can run five, 12 or 24 volts, which is always, always nice. Having extra fans is um, definitely always helpful, especially for larger printers. You want um, exhaust fans or mainboard cooling fans and all that kind of stuff. So it's really nice to have that. And it's really nice to have the ability to select their voltage without running buck converters and things like that. One thing I do wish, um, just a caveat to the CB1 module is this heat sink here is an add-on. This should come with the CB1. There should be, it should be all one package. There's no reason to buy the CB1 and not have the heat sink. Um, yeah, you could run the CB1 without a heat sink, but why not just include it? It's not that expensive. And that way you get a really nice mounting solution here with the screws. Otherwise the CB1 will just press fit onto the mount, which does hold it in place but I prefer having the heat sink with the actual mounts in place as well. So, I mean, I've had a lot of uh, great luck with this board. It's been really good to me. One thing, um, you know, that I could nitpick with it is maybe wiring diagram examples. Um, some of the competitors to Big Tree Tech's uh, Manta board here would be like the Spider. 
and they have really thorough documentation on how to wire this up, for instance, for a Voron, for a 2.4 or a Trident or something like that. They have very, very good wiring diagrams on how to wire their boards up. The reason I'm saying that is um, I actually made a mistake with this board when initially I was wiring it up because again, there was not really much information. I was actually just supplying power to the main board through the power input here where it just says power. I was supplying 24 volts to the main board and I was not supplying voltage to my stepper drivers. Now, I knew that most boards want some sort of power on the stepper drivers, otherwise they don't work. For instance, the Fisex Spider, they have like a little a jumper dongle that comes with the board that you would slot in and it powers the steppers as well as the main board. So it, it clearly indicates that you need to supply voltage to the steppers. It's not getting power from the main board. However, in my scenario, when I applied power to here and I, I um, tested the homing, the, the printer ran fine. Um, after a little bit of printing, I encountered some issues where uh, the printer just shut off and I had some issues here and there, that type of thing. And as far as I can tell, it was caused by not supplying 24 volts to the actual stepper drivers as well. Now, I know that these are separate here because you can run high voltage through this, like 56 volts or 48 volts or whatever it might be. So you can power your stepper drivers independently, but Big Tree Tech should make it very clear to the owner that you must power the main board and you also must power the stepper drivers regardless of the voltage, whether it's 24 volts, 48 volts, whatever it might be. They both need power input. Um, this is at least as far as I can tell. Um, I found a couple pictures of like, I think Voron 2.4s that have been wired up and they have been wired up the 24 volts going to the uh, motor input and also 24 volts going to the board. So as far as I can tell, all my issues went away um, after I powered up both the main board and the stepper drivers with 24 volts, but it's not clear at all with Big Tree Tech's documentation. So that's something to think about there as well. Um, I also do like here on the side that this does have an actual LAN connection. So you don't need to use Wi-Fi if you don't want to. I am using Wi-Fi on the CB1. Big Tree Tech has fixed all of their Wi-Fi issues um, as far as I know. I know early CB1 modules had issues. Um, they've updated the Linux kernel and the actual um, software as well as I think um, very quickly they had better revisions of the board. So Wi-Fi for this is working great. I do like it uses USB-C. Um, there's no reason to use like USB-A or B or anything like that on a modern main board. Everything should be USB-C for convenience. And I do like they give you two full-size USB ports here so that you can plug in like webcams and things like that. Again, they use the same board, um, an M4P, just with um, the five steppers or four stepper driver board for the Huracan, and it has all the same functionality, which is really, really nice. It's very, very convenient for sure, especially if you're actually gonna be plugging in a um, accelerometer, for instance. You can buy a USB accelerometer and plug it in here. There's a lot of accelerometers now, like ADXL, accelerometers for input shaping that are coming out that are USB ready. So you can just plug them in via USB port and start using them. That's what I did with this. So again, very modern, uh, fully featured. Their documentation is decent, but like I say, they could definitely provide some wiring examples for the printers that people are gonna use this on. People are gonna use this board on a Voron 2.4, on a Voron Trident. So why not provide some wiring diagrams for people? It just clears up all the confusion and makes sure that people are powering the board properly and that type of thing. So like I say, I've um, really, really enjoyed using this board. Uh, I really like that they broke out the GPIO pins here for the CB1 as well. The CB1 module fits here nice. Um, it's nice and flush too, it doesn't stick up or anything like that. Very easy to mount in a case. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of do an overview of my thoughts of the CB1. 
Um, the main thing I think I wanted to come across here is um, Big Tree Tech. Uh, I hope you do improve the wiring diagrams for this main board. And also I want to kind of alleviate some people's fears about the CB1 module maybe being abandoned. Um, it does, because it's not a Raspberry Pi, it does use a custom kernel that Big Tree Tech does have to maintain. But because they're using this module and Manta boards in other products, I really do think that they're going to support this going forward. So definitely leave some comments below on your thoughts, what you think of the Manta board, if you've used them or if you've used the CB1 or maybe you have a Huracan uh, 3D printer. Um, definitely feel free to join my Discord. Um, this is probably not going to be the first time I use a Manta board. I definitely want to try out some different ones. Uh, Big Tree Tech is also coming out with the easy one version. So the Manta board, but with the easy stepper drivers, the slot in stepper drivers. Um, so that's going to be pretty neat. And uh, like I say, I have a BQ Huracan 3D printer with a Manta M4P and I've ran Clipper and everything on that. It's a great machine and the board definitely suits the printer. So Thanks again, everyone, for watching. Um, feel free to join my Discord. I will put the link to this board in the description below, and I'll catch you guys next time.